Many of the people in this crowd have stood in this spot before to fight, to rally, to rant and rave and address our grievances, especially at the powers that be in this building. Very few of us have stood in this spot before to mourn. So we really don't know how to do it. Luckily, Dave left instructions. Let's just get it right out there. It's a sucky system. So here's an EMT driver, gets in an accident, loses his foot, gets it reattached. I read his suicide note today. He knew very well because he had medical training that he was going to be in pain the rest of his life and he had an idea that the conditions would get worse through the years. Nevertheless, he refused to accept any more help than he absolutely had to and he attempted to build a life for himself. He trained himself in computer. He ended up with a pretty high level computer job without ever graduating from college. He started to try to live his life as best he could. One of the deals about Doc that I think, you know, some people in the crowd here got upset because the first thing that came out in the paper said a homeless man had jumped from over there and killed himself. And then it went on to say what his address was, by the way. And some folks I know got, got angry at that as, you know, but Doc knew that somebody's character is not determined by their economic status. I heard somebody say, it wasn't like the others. He was educated. Really? Does anybody here need to be still under the illusion that somehow people that are smart or capable float naturally to the top of the system while everybody else floats down? Could we possibly get beyond that here, remembering, remembering Doc? Could we possibly understand that the system's upside down? And most Americans are within three weeks to three months from homelessness. And it takes a lost job or it takes an accident like Doc went through. Sometimes it takes a bounced check that then turns into about five or six bounced checks. You know what it was for Doc at the end? He couldn't get medical care. Do you know why he couldn't get medical care? Because he was in chronic pain from that accident and you know that our pharmaceutical companies are drug dealers. And a person can get addicted very easily. He was on a pain contract. And what happened to him was after six years or however long, that's when the accident happened, however long he had, he had been on that pain contract. You know what happened to him? He got his, we, his monthly prescription and he lost it. Anybody here ever lost anything? See, so then when he went to a doctor and said, I lost the prescription, they wrote on his record that this man is seeking drugs. And then no doctor would see him. 
Do you get this? This is us, people. We want to pretend it's somebody else. This is our country, our system, our world. Doc was our window in to us. For some of us, he was a window in. For all of us, he was a window into love. I know he didn't act it out all the time. Some of you probably felt his wrath. He was a window into solidarity. You know what solidarity means? It means we give a damn about each other. It means we give a damn about what happens in this country, in this world, to anybody, no matter what nationality they are, no matter how much they're made an outsider. Think of the issues he was there on. Immigration, gay marriage, labor rights, poor people everywhere. Name some out. I'm missing some. Violence. Isn't this who we're supposed to be? I'm sorry, we all feel a little guilty here, don't we? Or at least those of us that were close, like, maybe we could have done more. Doc was very rational. He wasn't perfect. Can we get this out of the way? Because it's not just the system's fault. Would, would everybody that's perfect here, that's never made a mistake, never become alienated from your family, never had any problems, would you just raise your hand? That's what, that's what I thought. See how important it is? I will never forget the twinkle in his eyes when he had his church members come out, out from under the church, out into the streets with me. And I was very honored. And then the last thing, the last night I was with Dave, he gave me a ride home. And he spoke to me, he said, John, I am, I am in so much pain, I, I wanna take my life. I didn't, I didn't take him seriously that night. And I just said, well, you know, um, the doc, just hang in there, man, hang in there. He was an activist till the very end. We were JCs together. Dave and I uh, jumped out of our first airplane together. He was fearless. He really was. We, every time we did, we used to joke that, you know, this is the closest we're ever going to get to God. We know that there is not a thing that we possess that we wouldn't have traded to strap that shoot on him for his last jump. Dave pushed us to do what was right and pushed us to reach out to others. And he, in his love for everyone, he was a guiding light. And I'm another one of those people who's gonna miss those big hugs on Sunday morning. And we shouldn't accept a system that creates those injustices. And we should fight with everything in us to change that system, to end that injustice. Homelessness is just one of the things that he fought for. What's the use of two strong legs if you only run away? What good is the finest voice if you've nothing good to say? What good are strength and muscles if you only push and shove? What's the use of two good ears if you can't hear those you love? between those who use their neighbors and those who use a cane, between those in constant power and those in constant pain, between those who run to evil and those who cannot run. Tell me which ones are the crip, which ones touch the sun? Our friend is gone, but he is not forgotten. Whatever way you believe, he is still with us. That is how it will be. May his memory live forever in our hearts and in our soul and in our actions.